Hey everyone, Shane here with eTrailer.com. Today I have a 2014 Polaris Sportsman 570 ATV. I'm going to walk through how to install the Bulldog 2500 pound winch and the Bulldog custom installation bracket. Adding a winch onto your ATV is going to give you a lot of different options. Uh, maybe you like to go out for one with your friends and you found yourself stuck and you're dependent on somebody else to get you out. Having a winch on there is going to allow you to take your winch strap, run it around a tree, be able to pull yourself out, or maybe you can pull one of your friends out. Maybe you use your four-wheeler around your farm and uh, you come across big logs in some of your trails and you can't really move them by hand. Again, adding a winch on like this, you can wrap it around that tree, you can get it out of your path to make it a lot easier. This is what our winch looks like when it's installed. You can see it fits very nicely on the front of our ATV. This particular winch is going to have a three-stage planetary gear in it. And when you compare that to like a wormhole gear, a wormhole gear is just a single gear and it only goes one speed. Having the three-stage planetary gear allows your drum to move much faster. So whatever you're moving, maybe you're moving a tree or again pulling yourself out, you're going to be able to move a little bit quicker. It's going to have an auto brake in it. So let's say we're on a steep hill, we have our uh, cable wrapped around a tree and obviously our vehicle is in neutral. We don't want our vehicle to start backing up on us. So it's going to have an auto brake in it that once we have it connected, uh, it's not going to allow the vehicle to move any farther. The winch itself is going to be fully encased. So uh, the casing around it is not going to allow any water or anything to get inside and do any damage to any gears. It's going to have an auto uh, release or what they say a free spool and it's a little lever over here on the side or a little knob on the side which we'll show you here in a little bit and allows you to pull the wire or pull the cable out freely so if we're wanting to wrap it around something we can just grab onto it pull it out get it wrapped around whatever we have lock it back into place and we're ready to go it's going to come with the Haas Fairlead um, it's going to have rounded edges because this particular winch is going to come with a synthetic rope when you compare the synthetic rope to like the wired ropes, uh, the wired ones tend to rust over time. They splinter and even wearing gloves, uh, those splinters can sometimes get through those gloves and they tear up your hands. Even if those wired ones get kinked, they don't spool up anymore. We don't have to worry about that with the synthetic rope. The synthetic rope is going to be 50 foot long, so we're going to have plenty of length to get out, pull it out, get it around a tree, get it around, you know, whatever we may be working with. It's also going to come with the hook and the strap so we don't have to actually grab onto the uh, synthetic rope itself. We can grab it right here on the strap to pull it out. This is going to be our knob for our uh, free spool. All we're going to do is we're going to turn it and that allows us, again, to pull out our synthetic rope without having to hit our button. Once we get out to where we want, lock it back in place and it locks the rope in. It's also gonna come with a switch. The switch you can use it in two different ways. You can use it how we have it here, where we have it mounted to the handlebars. It's gonna come with a handlebar mount or it's gonna have an eight foot cable. Once it's connected to the uh, solenoid, you can take it and tuck it in somewhere and you can use it while you're standing out away from the bike. It's really gonna be up to you and how you want to use it. It is going to be a momentary in and out switch. Now this particular uh, kit does have to be wired to an ignition source, which we have it wired directly to uh, one of the wires coming off of our ignition here. So that it only comes on when our key is in the on position. Now it is recommended, anytime you're winching something, you have your line out, have a line break on it. Even though this is a synthetic rope, we still don't want, if that happens to break, we don't want any of that rope coming back and hitting us. And you can see as soon as I let off the switch, it's got again the auto brake in it, it's not going to let us roll anywhere. Now as far as a bracket that's mounting it to our vehicle, uh, this is a custom bracket, it's also by Bulldog. It doesn't come with a winch, however, you can find it here at e-trailer just by checking the fit guide for the bike that you have. 
The bracket itself, as I mentioned, is going to be custom fit, so we're not going to have to drill any holes or anything like that. It's going to mount directly to factory holes that are already in the frame. As far as the installation process, uh, the winch and the bracket, if you decide to go with the bracket, is going to come with all the necessary hardware to get them installed. The only trimming we had to do, and it was for this particular bike, is this small panel right here was still in there, so we had to cut it out in order to install the winch. Other than that, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Wiring's very simple and straightforward. Uh, now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk you through how to get it installed. To start our installation, we need to remove this lower panel. If you have a guard, the way this one is set up, this guard's gonna have to come off too. We'll have two bolts up here, and then two down here. We're gonna use a half inch socket wrench, or two sockets to remove that. We'll set this aside. Then we need to remove this bracket here. Nine millimeter socket, we'll remove it. Then we're gonna take a T27 star bit. And we're gonna remove, you're gonna have one bolt here and one on the opposite side. We need to remove both of those. Take this, and we're gonna pop this off and set it aside. Now before we install this on the bracket, we need to make sure we cut our loop off first. We're gonna cut this zip tie. We'll just unwind it one time. Leave a little bit hanging out. Then we can install it onto our bracket. You're gonna have a bracket that looks like this. You'll notice that it's angled. We want this angle. Kind of see how it's facing down. We want that facing down. We're gonna take this bracket, line it up there. We're gonna slide our winch in, side like this. And then this bracket is gonna mount just like that. In your kit with your winch, you're gonna get a pack of bolts. We're gonna use four of the longer ones. You're gonna put on a lock washer, and then a flat washer. The winch is gonna have threaded holes in it. We'll get one in each corner of our bracket. We'll take a half inch socket and we'll tighten them down. Or wrench. Now we're gonna install our fairly. I'm finding that the bolts are not quite fitting in there. And it could be just paint. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to strip out the bolts. So I'm gonna take a drill bit. I'm just gonna clean the holes out just a little bit. That's what you want to do. Now it's up to you. You can spray that hole if you take that paint off. I have a paint marker, so I'm just kind of covering up that bare metal. Kind of help resist any rust or anything later on. Now we're going to take our fair lead. We're going to run our rope through it. We're going to line up with the holes. We're going to take our bolt. Drop it through each one of the holes. And then on the underside, we're going to put a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut on each one. Now we're going to use an 11 16 socket and a number 8 Allen head or Allen wrench, and we're going to tighten those down. Next, we're going to take our winch setup and we're going to get it mounted to our bike. On your bike, there's a frame mount here. It's going to see two holes on each side. We're going to line these brackets up with those two holes. In your kit with the bracket, you're going to have a couple of short bolts. You have to use these to mount the bracket. 
You're gonna have hardware that comes with your winch. I suggest putting on a flat washer and a lock washer from the winch pack before you mount, or when you mount this to the actual uh, bike. In the instructions, they don't show the lock washer and flat washer on there. And we'll take a half inch socket and we'll tighten those down. Next, we need to find a place to mount our solenoid. They really want this mounted up high out of the elements. Problem is, there's a compartment here. If you want to mount it inside, you have open contact. So if you're throwing, you know, straps or anything like that in there, if they hit that, you could have an issue. The centerpiece underneath of this comes out to get to the radiator fluid. Um, there's not really a whole lot of room in there. One thing you could do, possibility, is you could buy a junction box. Uh, mount the, the junction box inside of this compartment here and then mount this inside of it. It's going to take a lot of extra work getting all your wires ran up there, all of that. So what I think I'm going to do is this panel right here on the side. We're going to remove it. Our frame rail runs straight down. We'll remove this panel. We're going to mount a solenoid right to it. Our radiator is going to block anything from hitting it there. This panel is going to block anything coming from our wheels from hitting it. So we're going to take our star bit. We're going to move this bolt here. There actually should be a push pin faster on this back side, but it doesn't look like they had one on there. Let's take this and slide it out of the way. And then our, this is our framer I was talking about. Since our battery is right here, we're going to make it easy to route everything up and away from anything hot or moving. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my solenoid right here. It'll be behind the panel. As I mentioned, it'll be behind the radiator. All of my uh, connections here will be protected. And then again, we have our front panel we still need to put on. So we'll have plenty of coverage for it. Now what we need to do is we need to drill holes into the bracket so we can get our hardware mounted. Now with our solenoid mounted, all I did was use some self-tappers. It's a little bit of an odd angle to get a drill bit in there to drill holes. Uh, again, I just use self tappers. I use an extension on the drill and just went straight down on it. See it holds it in there pretty well. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and get my switch wire routed down to my solenoid. Uh, I think I'm gonna mount it right here on my handlebars. It does come with a handlebar bracket. I'm gonna get these mounted. I'm gonna run them back behind this panel, down underneath and over my solenoid. And then we'll go from there. You're gonna get two sets of wires, two red and two black. One of the sets of black and red are gonna be short, and the other set are gonna be long. Depending on the winch you have, it's gonna depend on whether you use the short ones from the winch to the solenoid or the long ones. Our particular winch, we're gonna be using the short ones. You're gonna have boots that come in your kit. They're little rubber boots. You're gonna slide them right over, your, right over the ends of the cables. We're gonna go ahead and run these from our winch over to where we mounted our solenoid. Before I get that completely tight, I'm gonna get this routed over. How I'm routing it is where this bracket ties into the frame, there's a, there's a gap in there. I'm gonna run it right straight through. Use a 10 millimeter socket once you get your wires routed to tighten them down. And you wanna take that boot and you wanna slide it over the top of your connectors. So you're gonna notice on your solenoid, there's a black and green wire. There's also a blue wire going to a negative post. The negative post and positive post on that end are the cables that are gonna, or the connections that are gonna go to the battery. The opposite side are the two coming from the winch. So our wires that we just ran over, we need to route them and connect them to these two posts. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run right underneath the here, to here, it'll stay away from my radiator there's a hole in my frame right there. I can run a zip tie around and it'll hold it up tight right there. This is gonna be my longer positive cable that's gonna to go to my battery. This is how I mounted my switch. Again, it's gonna come with the bracket. Just kind of determine where you want to put it and then tighten everything down. 
The cable is coming off it. I routed, I took these two panels apart. It's got three screws, at least this one does. You have one in the front here and then two here and then one here and this will pop off. And you pretty much got a straight line straight down through there, right uh, over to where the solenoid and battery are. You're gonna have a red wire in this bundle. It needs to be connected to an ignition switch. We wanna connect it to a wire that only is on when the power is on, or when the key is in the on position. I determine that it's this red one with this black stripe. You'll notice there's two of them. I tested all four of these and determined that this is the one I'm gonna be using. I'll go ahead and test it again to show you. You can see we have no power. Keys in the on position. So that's the wire we want to tap into. Now, I am not going to cut the wire and splice this in. What I'm going to use is a quick splice connector. These do not come in your kit, but you can pretty much find these anywhere. get that put back together there we can get this put back on throw a zip tie on there get it looking as factory as possible the green and black wire coming from our switch we're going to connect them to the green and black wires on our solenoid what I'm going to do is once I connect them I'm going to go ahead and tape them up to make sure they stay connected if you really wanted to you could cut these off and hardwire them uh, but if you ever have any problem with the solenoid or the switch you'd have to cut the wire and then re-splice it so it's really going to be up to you last thing we need to do is we need to connect our power and ground from our solenoid to our battery once we get that connected, we'll test it all out, make sure everything is working correctly, and then we can start putting everything back together. Now that we've got everything connected, connected to our battery, we'll go ahead and test it out. Turn our key on. Now that we know it's working correctly, we can go ahead and start bundling up our wire, getting our front panel bit back on, Keep in mind, on this front panel, we are gonna to have to trim a little bit. Yours may not. We're gonna to have to cut out this lower panel for our winch fair lead and our uh, cable. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it right along that line. But I think I'm gonna cut it from in here. You can kind of see where it has that lip there. So I'm gonna follow that line cut this out and then we can go from there if we have to trim out anymore. I'm just going to use a rotary tool with a cutting blade to get that done. Now that we've got everything put back on, we need to put our hook onto our ring. We're going to bend the cotter pin. We're going to slide that pin out. We're going to reinstall it just like that. And of course, we can slide on our pull strap. We're ready to go. It's going to do it for a look at an installation on the Bulldog 2500 pound winch and custom installation bracket on a 2014 Polaris Sportsman 570 ATV.